Election 2019 could be the first in Canadian history to be won or lost based on the environment, climate change, and which party has the best plan for tackling it is shaping up to be a, if not the, ballot box question. It's also become a proxy issue on affordability and the economy. Climate change topped the list of things Canadians care most about, overtaking usual election issues like the economy, ethics, and health care, according to a recent nano survey. He'll join us later, by the way. So with concerns about cost, effectiveness, and some very big promises, we've gathered a group of candidates to try to separate the myths from the reality. Marco Mendicino is a Liberal candidate for Ontario. Lisa Raitt is a Conservative candidate in Ontario. Daniel Blakey is an NDP candidate in Manitoba. And Jean-Luc Cook is a Green Party candidate also in Ontario. Great to have all of you. I'm just going to go around the horn first. Uh, Marco Mendicino, uh, the Liberals have put forward a plan, okay, that we know of. The carbon tax with the rebate is part of it. And the price of carbon rises to $50 a ton by 2022. The Parliamentary Budget Officer, though, says your party will still miss your own uh, agreed-upon Paris targets. You won't even come close. My question, how high will the price of carbon have to go for your party to meet those targets? Well, let's start with the most important word in your question, which is that we have a plan. It's a serious plan that includes putting a price on pollution. Um, we know that it's effective. It's worked in other jurisdictions, including in British Columbia and in Quebec. And ironically, Mr. Scheer said the very first thing that he would do if elected would be to make pollution free again. Um, I think that that just shows he doesn't get it. He thinks climate change is either a hoax or good for, good for Canadians. Now, you've got a choice if you are a voter out there. You've got a Liberal Party that has a price on pollution that is going to phase out coal, that is going to ban harmful plastics, or you've got a Conservative Party of Canada whose environmental policy is equivalent to the earth is flat. Okay, could you answer the question, though? Uh, you, the parliamentary budget officer says, with all that rhetoric, you ain't going to hit your targets. The price only rises to 50 bucks. A firm answer, please. How high a price will your party put on carbon in order to meet the targets? 60, 80, 100? Where does it go, sir? Look, under our plan, we have a price on pollution. Every polluter is going to pay, and the revenues that we take back from that will be put back into Canadian households. It's an affordable plan, it's an effective plan, and we will get to those targets. We're more than three quarters of the way there, and we have a serious plan, unlike the Conservatives, who oscillate between denying or thinking that climate change would be good for Canadians. I'm gonna leave that as no answer on how far that price has to go, but let me go to Lisa Ray. Uh, your party keeps criticizing the carbon tax as being too expensive, though your party does not mention the rebate that comes with it that Mr. Mendicino mentioned, to be fair. But your party has also not released its own price on uh, carbon. For example, your plan requires big emitters to pay into a tech fund once those emitters cross a th certain threshold. Tell us, please, what is the price on carbon a Conservative government would set to calculate the fee a company would have to pay? So, Evan, I, um, I can actually answer Marco's question because we've crunched the numbers on that. What the parliamentary budget officer has said is that it has to go to 100 bucks per ton in order for them to get to what, the, what they have set as their emissions goals. That translates in Ontario to about $469 a year on your home heating and about 30 cents a liter on your gas when you put it in your car. So those are big numbers and we don't believe that the consumer and the taxpayer should shoulder the entire burden. So yes, we say big polluters should be part of it. And we say there's gonna be a cap and if they go over that cap, they're gonna to have to invest in technology. And I would say this, Evan, in terms of technology and why it can help you get to whether or not you're gonna hit those emissions, if you take a look at China, they've got 3,000 electricity plants there that are burning coal. If we sent over to just 100 of these plants our carbon capture storage technology in order to reduce emissions, that's enough decrease in emissions that will meet our targets here okay, in but Canada. Can you just so it also, does matter just, what we're just, doing just, in technology. What's the price? I, I'm looking for a number. You talk about the Liberal numbers. Let's talk about the Conservative numbers. What is the price of carbon that a big emitter would have to pay into the tech fund? Because I've read through the Conservative plan. There's no target. Yeah. You don't know what it's going to actually meet. And you won't say the number. So I'm going to ask you a clear question again. What's the price on carbon? Your party has one. You just refuse to say it. What is it? It's not going to be 100 bucks a ton placed solely on the backs of the consumer. I can tell you that. We're taking a different plan. 
and the way that we're going to go in a direction is to make the big polluters pay. And that's exactly and completely different from what the Liberals plan on doing. And we'll be talking more about our, right. our plan, which is quite large in terms of, of covering off a whole lot of things that people want to talk about, like technology and putting back into the hands of people to use the home renovation tax credit to make sure that their own carbon footprint is able to be shrunk too. Okay, uh, there's lots of plans. Again, I, I didn't hear a number there, but let me go to the NDP to be fair. Daniel Blakey, Mr. Singh continually talks about a price on carbon as well and criticized the Liberals for adopting the Harper targets. So tell us, what targets will your party adopt? And again, to be fair, what price on carbon would that require? Yeah, well, the uh, first thing to say is that in terms of targets, what, what we want are science-based targets that actually ensure Canada does its share in terms of reducing its uh, carbon footprint. So we want them enshrined in legislation. We want them taken in, into consideration within approval processes for big uh, projects. And we want some independent reporting on how Canada is doing, which is why we're talking about setting up a climate change accountability office, because I think for a lot of Canadians, they hear journalists or politicians talking about uh, numbers. They want to hear... Uh, that we have clear targets that are actually science-based and they want to get uh, reporting that they feel that they can trust on how, well, on, on how we're making progress. So what's so the target for the NDP? What's your number? I, I mean, people want to know because they're, they're voting on this. We know that you, you, there's, a, there's a more robust target. What is that target and what would that mean for a price on carbon? Well, the uh, ultimate target is going to be whatever it takes in order to be able to get our emissions down to uh, what we agreed to in the uh, Paris Accord. So we're way off that right now. Those are the targets that we want to adopt. Those are the targets that have to uh, be, be, play a meaningful role in deciding whether or not we uh, go ahead with uh, projects that have the capacity to increase our emissions. Okay, so, so, you're, so you're saying th that the Those are the targets that okay. we want, ones that are actually consistent with meeting our Paris Accord commitments. All right, and that's, that's the Paris Accord. So the, so the Harper uh, Conservative targets, the Liberals, the Conservatives, and the NDP all vote. They all have the same target. Let me go to you, Jean-Luc Cook, from the Green Party. Uh, all right, they all have the same targets. I, I can't hear a lot of numbers there. What about a Green Party? Uh, what are your targets? What price on carbon does that require? A price on carbon is only part of the answer. Uh, really what we need to have is a, a significant amount of infrastructure development as well, interprovincial hydroelectric connectivity, because really the target is zero. Zero carbon emissions from transmission and uh, generation of electricity, zero emissions from transportation. It's like paying off a credit card. You start with the highest interest first. Those areas we have to attack first. And afterwards, we start looking at insulating homes. Uh, the Conservatives talk about home renovation tax credit. Last time they had that, you got a tax credit for putting in a hot tub. We can't have that. We need to have tax credits that are focused on creating more efficiency in home. <clears throat> excuse me, more e efficiency in homes, so that we so people pay less on their heating bills. Okay, so what's the target then? I mean, is, you don't. It's 1.5 degrees C above pre-industrial. But don't levels. you want to double the target that the Liberals are using? Double the Paris target? Is that the right for the Green Party? The Paris target is the agreed upon national target, uh, international target. So that's the target we want to get to. Now, what what the target needs to be in as part of the plan that every party needs to be part of is zero emissions on electrical generation across the country. So coal, natural gas, all has to go away. All we right. have to replace it with uh, solar and wind power, which is now cheaper than any other form of electrical generation. All right, I just, I, I just I have a couple seconds. Is this a ballot box question, Mr. Mendicino? Is, is climate a fringe issue now or is it a central issue in the campaign? I think it's absolutely a central issue. Look, in 2015, at the doors, you still had to explain the effects of climate change. But in 2019, you no longer need to do that with uh, growing extreme events, whether they be uh, hurricanes, forest fires, uh, the droughts that we're seeing, all of which is putting a tremendous cost to society, health, into the economy. Uh, I do want to point out that of all the other th uh, parties that you asked, uh, we have targets. They are transparent. I heard Lisa really strain to answer the question about what the target would be, but I do agree with the They're Green the Party um, Stephen individual. Had, which don't I, meet I do, the I do agree targets. with the Green Party individual that we do need to build. And we have over $60 billion allocated for things like greening our public transit system. Where in the city of Toronto, I announced alongside Mayor Tory 60 new e buses. Where in Windsor, for example, we announced $30 million to help homeowners and business owners mitigate against future floods. Those are the types of economic opportunities which exist but it's not helping that Doug Ford hasn't even opened up the green infrastructure stream in the province right. of Ontario this is a central ballot box uh, question and we're looking forward to presenting those choices to to Canadians yeah Lisa Ray central is it a central question I mean the accusation is that the Conservatives had a plan with no targets because they don't believe it's the central issue is it well 
It is in the sense that it comes up in the affordability side as well. I mean, if, if Mr. Nanos is going to tell you that climate's an issue, buried within those numbers, I think, are people who are saying that they don't believe the carbon tax is going to do anything and they want to repeal the carbon tax, which is what we talk about. So in a sense, yeah, we are talking about climate and affordability all wrapped up into one another. We said that the first thing we would do as a government, day one, is introduce that first bill to repeal the carbon tax because we don't believe it actually does what it says it's going to do. And in fact, at the numbers that the Liberals have proposed, it won't. And they will not even indicate to consumers whether or not they're going to increase it. I live in Milton. I lived through what happened when Kathleen Wynne decided to triple how much we pay in electricity. And I saw the devastation that can happen on people's pocketbooks. Uh we're not going to be doing that. Uh, Daniel Blakey, re re real quick, and uh, Mr. Cook. Uh, central issue to the campaign, or is it one of those things that starts off and then eventually it goes back to health care, the economy? No, I think it absolutely is uh, a, a central issue in this campaign. And to the extent, look, and I think most Canadians would say, look, we want to do what we can in order to be able to reduce emissions and, and uh, minimize climate change. Where there's concern is on the economic side, and that's why we believe that any meaningful plan to be able to transition to a low carbon economy has to start with workers and the people are going to be affected. So that's why we're talking about modifying the, the employment insurance system to make sure that the uh, All right. training resources that people might be able to access when they're laid off, they can actually so, access them before they're laid off so that they can plan for an orderly transition and get the skills that they need in order to, to be able to avail themselves of some of the opportunities that will exist if government right. gets serious about that transition. It's not and about do what we can. Like, like retrofitting homes and retrofitting buildings to make them more efficient, that can create a lot of employment, but we want people who are now working in the fossil fuel industry to be able to get the training resources they need proactively in order to be able to train for those jobs. So it's, it, it is about jobs, and, and the only, uh, to the extent that there's a barrier All for right, some okay. people Mr. to want to move forward on the environmental front, it's about making sure that them and their families are going to be taken care of with good jobs, and that's what the NDP plan is all about. Uh, last word. This is not about doing what we can, it's doing what we must. And yes, it's going to be a central issue in this campaign, because the two biggest wild cards across the country right now is millennials and Quebec. Millennials, climate change is a must-have platform issue. Quebec, same deal. In the spring, there were protests in Quebec. 150,000 students protested in Quebec for climate action, real climate action based on the targets put out by the IPCC, and only the Green Party really has a platform that can hit us, hit those targets. All right, uh, I got to leave it there. We will pick up this issue, by the way, with Nick Nanos, our pollster, coming up. But I want to thank uh, Marco Mendicino, Lisa Raitt, Daniel Blakey, and Jean-Luc Cook. Great to have you all. Good luck in your campaign.